What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself. In this video, I'll be talking about the five common mistakes that athletes make when they're performing the three-step approach jump. I'll also be answering questions that you left in my last video where I teach you how to do the three-step approach jump technique step-by-step, step, which is the most fundamental way to jump in volleyball, and I'll link that video in the description box below. The first one is your first step is too big and aggressive. We talked about how majority of the power is generated from our penultimate step. And you're like a race car, you only have one boost. If you use your boost too early, you're gonna fizzle out at the end. Too soon, Junior. Be patient in the beginning and use your boost during the second to last step. So keep your first step pretty small, medium, and your arms short instead of long and big. Second common mistake is the galloping into the penultimate step. And we know from a lot of research that the longer the penultimate step is, the higher the vertical jump. So not only do we shorten our penultimate step by galloping, we're slowing down our approach because now we have to decelerate to accelerate back up in the air. If I have a nice long penultimate step that naturally lowers my hip to the ground, so I'm already in a pre-squatted position so I can quickly squat up as soon as I hit my third step. So make sure you don't gallop into your penultimate, make sure you push into your penultimate. The third common mistake is maintaining a consistent speed, whether you're fast, 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 or slow, 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 throughout the entire approach. That's what causes the broad jump, that's consistent speed with each step. And of course, slow, you can't generate enough momentum. So make sure that you manage your rhythm from slow to fast, not fast, fast, fast. Slow to fast. If you wanna increase your vertical jump and become a more powerful and explosive athlete, then use my jump training programs linked below that provide body weight only jump training where you can train in the comfort of your home without any equipment, or my 12 month jump training program that utilizes standard gym equipment, provides weekly workouts, tells you exactly what to do, when to do it. It also comes with a mobile training app and over 100 exercise tutorial videos. So you can take me as your virtual trainer to the gym, just like I was coaching you in person. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get 5% off all of my jump training programs. The fourth common mistake is diving into the approach with your torso and your shoulders. So once I'm here, people think that if I get lower to the ground, I'm gonna jump higher but it takes too much time for my hips to extend. And by that time, all that horizontal momentum has carried me past my feet and creates that excessive broad jump. And you've already lost a lot of force into the floor because you make too long of a ground contact time. You wanna keep your ground contact time short so that less of that energy goes into heat resistance and noise and friction and back into your body to help you jump higher. So this is what the diving approach looks like. See how I'm slow off the ground. You wanna be high off the ground. Keep that torso up on that second and third step. So I lean forward. See how I can quickly transition into my last two steps. The fifth mistake is chicken wing arms. So I'm short here and then the chicken wing approach. We've talked about how your arms can add 10 to 20% to your vertical jump. And the longer I make my arms only on my backswing, not on my front swing of that first step, so only on my backswing. Now the chicken wing approach is fast, but not very powerful. You lose three to six inches easily by not extending your arms. If I straighten my arms, it does take a little longer to execute the approach, but the reward is a higher vertical jump and a more powerful arm swing. So make sure your arms are straight in that penultimate position, not bent. Even if you're a taller athlete, some of the most powerful hitters in the world usually have their arms completely straight, not bent elbows. 
Now we'll have our Q&A session where I answer questions that you left in my last video about the three-step approach jump technique. Alma S. asks, is there a difference in how high you can jump between the four-step and three-step approaches? I've tried both, but I can't really seem to tell the difference. Now you should be able to jump one to three inches higher off of a four-step approach because you are getting a little extra momentum from that first step. However, a four-step approach jump is harder to time when you're spiking, which is why I usually like to teach a three-step approach. Plus, whenever you're first learning volleyball, you don't know what position you're going to play yet. So starting with a three-step approach jump will make you more versatile later down the road, and it's always easier to add more steps to that as you advance. Hara Reda asks, thanks a lot for the advice. Is it too late to start playing in the 20s? I hope I can become a professional. One of the best players I've ever met was Martin Ume, and he didn't start playing volleyball until he was like 22 or 24. And he came from a background from soccer, and so I think that definitely gave him an athletic base, but it just goes to show that if you put in the right work, you can become great at anything. Now, that does mean that it will become more challenging to become a professional volleyball player because you are starting later, but I will never tell anyone that they can't do something because you never know until you try. Henry's 2.0 asks, when I jump at home, I keep the three-step rule, but I don't keep the rule during the game. What should I do? It's a common problem for athletes to do something great in practice, but when it comes game time, the technique goes out the window. The only way to break through that barrier is you have to consciously be willing to look like a fool on the court and solely focus on the technique that you're trying to apply in game that you might end up losing the point because your timing and other elements might be off. So at your next game, a good goal is 50% of the time I want to execute a three-step approach jump as I'm spiking. And a success is not whether I score the point, a success is whether I actually did the three-step approach jump technique during a spike. Kaviyasaran Gnanasekaran Sorry, totally butchered your name. What is the position of my palm at penultimate step? Should it face up or face with each other palm? That's a really observant question. Most athletes that I've trained usually have their palm up during the backswing, but there are some athletes, even at the highest level, like Yuki Ishikawa, that have their palms facing each other. And I would recommend playing around with both palm directions and just see which one feels more natural. As long as your wrists and arms are loose, then that's the most important thing. Now, I don't recommend doing it with your palms back because that does affect the momentum when transitioning into your arm swing of the spike. Berlin B asks, my daughter wears ankle braces so she can't really turn her foot when doing the penultimate step. Any advice? Even with ankle braces, you should be able to turn a little bit. Now, even turning 30 to 40 degrees is still better than turning no degrees now, unless a doctor specifically says you have to play with ankle braces because structurally there's no stability, I actually recommend weaning off ankle braces and developing more ankle stability in the gym because wearing ankle braces long term will actually lead to weaker ankles and cause more knee and ankle problems. So you can transition from a really tight ankle brace and then a looser ankle brace and then just a strap and then hopefully into no brace. Because if you want to excel at a high level of sports, you need to have proper ankle mobility for defense, sprinting, jumping. And if you notice a lot of the top volleyball teams in the world, they're actually not wearing ankle braces unless they are recovering from injury. If you want to improve your recovery from sports, workouts, or injuries, then you should definitely use Ghost Sleeve products, which comes with calf sleeves, knee sleeves, and elbow sleeves, which acts like reusable kinesio tape and gives your muscles and joints the support they need to get you back on the court faster and feeling better. Get 15% off your Go Sleep products with my discount code and link in the description box so you can start recovering faster and get back on the court sooner. Retro Spirit asks, hey coach, on the penultimate step, you're leading with the hip, correct? I try not to think about leading with the hip. I think more about pushing with my left foot. So if I'm a right-handed hitter, I'm gonna be pushing with my left leg to extend my right leg forward. I wouldn't try to consciously push my hips forward or to lunge forward with my right leg. The pushing element is the most important because naturally if you push forward, your hips will naturally go down and forward at the same time. 
So let the hips be a byproduct of properly pushing off of your back leg. Michael Kimball asks, does the approach change any if I was hitting right side, but I am right-handed? Yes, and I'm actually gonna make a video about how your foot angles will change depending on what position you play. So to quickly answer your question, when you're hitting on the right side, you actually don't need to turn your feet as much because you're already open to the court. But you do wanna turn your feet a little bit, could be anywhere from like 10 to 30 degrees for your right and left foot. You don't have to fully turn them all the way because then you're gonna open up beyond the court and you can't really see where the ball's coming from. So in short, turn your feet slightly. You don't have to turn it as much as 45 or 90 degrees. But stay tuned for that video because I will go into detail about how to do that. Smoke Mom asks, how do I grow taller though? <laughs> I know you probably asked this as a joke, but I put this in the Q&A session because I wanna talk about sleep. Especially if you're a young person, the best way to maximize your height is to get lots of high quality sleep. I'm not talking about staying up until 4 a.m., eating Cheetos and ramen and playing video games and then sleeping, quote unquote, sleeping until 3 p.m. because we all know that sleeping while the sun is out, our bodies aren't meant to do that. And so the quality of sleep that we get, get a lot of the dreams, we wake up and down, just because you're physically in bed doesn't mean you're getting good quality sleep. So sleeping at a, an appropriate time, anywhere between like 9 p.m. and midnight and getting a quality seven to nine hours of sleep that is the best way to maximize your height. The second best way is just doing a hanging stretch. So find a pull-up bar and just hang every day for sets of 10 to 20 seconds, however long you can handle for a couple sets. And that's a really good way to open up your spine and it just feels really good because we get so tight from sitting and being on our phones and typing all day. But opening your body up, those are two of the best ways that I recommend to increase your physical height. Bokoto asks, I can't get the third step right. I'm jumping lower than before because it doesn't come natural to do this approach. Well, just like anything, anytime you implement a new technique, majority of the time you're not gonna get better right away because your body's not used to it. But the whole point of practicing good technique is that it's gonna make you better in the long term, even if you have temporary short-term sacrifices. So I recommend continue to doing the technique slowly, then speed it up, and just keep practicing it until it becomes natural. And then you're gonna experience the effect of quickly propelling off the floor, which is the critical component of that last step. If you want me to answer any more of your questions, then make sure you sign up for my Patreon, where we have monthly live Q&A sessions, and you can ask as many questions as you want, and I'll be happy to answer them and help you achieve your next level of volleyball skill.